hills and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to be All right. Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers in Association with Leith Spirits and mine. Hiya. Hiya, I'm Colin. I jumped in there before you said your name. That's terrible, nice. eh? Ah, that's all right. Uh, hiya, hiya, I'm John. Me. <laughs> Good to have that eagerness, eh? So we've no game to talk about this week, so uh, what we're going to talk about is almost like a, a, a sort of free-to-air extra time episode where we're going to focus on one thing, and this one thing is Ian Gordon's uh, interview that he's done uh, with the Scotsman. Uh, so it was with Mark Atkinson. We'll, we'll share the link uh, in the podcast description or the YouTube um, description as well so that you can go and read it for yourselves. Um We've had a good read through. I thought it was quite an interesting piece. At the same time, told us stuff without telling us anything, which is kind of the way these things sometimes go. Uh, John, what, what did you think after you finished reading it? What jumped out of you? <clears throat> well, I read it once. I think yesterday it was published, and then I've read it today while I've been kind of doing other stuff at the same time. So, Chris, that doesn't sound very good, does it? I, I wasn't really paying attention when I read it. No, no, I did read it. And you know what, I think probably the thing that struck me most was on the second reading where, uh, I think it's within the, the opening paragraph or two, where I was reminded that Ian Gordon's actually a, a reasonably young man at 34. Because I know that I know that he's obviously come under a lot of criticism. I don't know, like I have this, this thing in my head where all footballers are younger than me. Like it just feels that way. Uh-huh. Despite the fact that I'm 41 now. Eh, sorry, all footballers are older than me, despite the fact that I'm 41, but it's the reality is that all footballers are younger than me. Um, and you've got a guy there who is the owner of a football club who's found himself, I think, thrust into that position because of some pretty, I, I don't know, I'm going to say unfortunate circumstances, but that, that's, that's not the right description. Like, Ron <laughs> Gordon yeah. has to be. And, and, he's, and Ian Gordon has kind of found himself thrust into the limelight if you like and he's he's kind of like head of the family and he's heading up the football club amongst other businesses and I think if nothing else the article reminded me that he's that he's a human being and I was I was reflecting on what I was doing when I was 34 um, and I think it was when me and the missus were on holiday and I was eating kanga bangers at the back of a, a wee Mitsubishi uh, touring van that I was too big to actually drive so the missus did all the driving up there showing his coast being in um, a post it, it is a wee bit, but it's it's just to try and draw that kind of like parallel between the two. I mean, obviously, like uh, Ian Gordon with a badge of this day in a wee ex council house in Livingston, he's got a pretty, you know, he's got a nicer gaff. I know he's got a nicer car than me because I've seen him driving away for Easter Road a couple of weeks ago. But it was Same in Edinburgh, by the way. That's not exactly me. Uh, that's not the same. You're scrimping and saving. Like ah, you're you're even near Edinburgh, you're fucked. So <laughs> well done, well done, Ian. So that 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 was the, probably the the main thing that struck me for all the criticism that Hibbs and Ian Gordon has come in for, he's still a reasonable young man who's probably learning things far quicker than he was intended to. Uh, that seems fair. Go on, what about you? What, what jumped out for you? Yeah, the 34 year old thing. Like, it genuinely, like, it's funny that he says that because uh, that, that was what I thought, holy fuck, 34, man, I'm ancient. Um, but yeah, no, I, what I thought was um, oh. good that they're doing stuff to Scotsman website's a fucking name, isn't it? Like with the adverts. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's only a nightmare if you didn't take it a subscription call. It just still being so tight. I, 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 used to, I used to get even the use. I used to deliver it. I used to work for the company. Um, but no, I, I thought I thought it was good they're doing stuff because obviously I've criticised them for not communicating. And, and tried to be on the front foot and, and all of that, so the proper ramming us with it, you know, like, because I've got the Sky Sports one coming tomorrow, or they've got the Evening News one here, you know, they're, they're, there's various, obviously, methods that are attempting, but yeah, good, good for them. I'm not, I'm not sure how much it told us in reality, but I, I like the, there was the admission of, um, got stuff wrong and all that, like, yeah. good, good, um, because, you can't you can't deny it, and they're not. So so that's what positive I think for that point of view. I think I think they need. I think it's good to talk about it and and get everybody get everybody on board. And I think if you communicate, that's that's one way to do it. So 
Aye. What's said is um, almost by the by. You know what I mean? It's like it, it. It's just that they are doing it, and it takes that negativity away. I, I thought the, the the thing that came across for me was the the commitment. So I think that gets lost as well, it, doesn't it? Like the, I think you, you we certainly we judge what we see um, for the club and, and for Ian Gordon, and I probably still have my concerns on the back. So I, I think you both mentioned the thirty four year old. I would question still whether Ian Gordon's CV, if he wasn't a, had, had he not inherited the club would have put him in a position that he's in at the club now. So there is that sort of nepotism aspect of it, which I, which I think is unavoidable. Like, he won't go away and, you know, it's his his club is the majority his shareholder along with his, his mum. We didn't really have any say in it, and if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. Um, but I, they talked about other businesses that, uh, that they have. You know, it says we've got loads of businesses that we had to sort of get the ducks in a row before they decided what they were doing with uh, with Hibs so he's chosen it it's not like he's that's the only thing that Ron Gordon had and he's landed it and went well nobody else is going to pick it up I better do it there's other businesses that he could have done but he's he's found himself at Hibs or, or put himself in, in that position so th- there is like a, a desire for him to go and see it through um, I think he said early on in the article he says we know we need to do better I take it very hard personally I live and breathe this club and me and my family want to bring success but there have been more poor performances than we would have liked um, talking about like the instability for the managers, he says we've created too much instability with the football and turnover. That's why we're in this position now. Um, and I also can speak to the recruitment being not so great as well. Uh, John, there is reference to the new structure in place. So he, he says basically Malky McKay takes care of the football side. Uh, ben Kensel's take care of the business side. Is that how you would expect it to run now? As Colin. Guy in college is probably a better place to answer that question. Uh, I don't know. Like I think I think I've talked about this. I, I certainly wrote about it when I said that this is this is stuff that I'm not 100 percent comfortable talking about because I've never really been at that sort of level of business to be talking about structure, etc. The uh-huh. the question, the sort of burning question that I have that I'm I'm really keen to ask is. <clears throat> You've been honest and you've admitted to a number of mistakes having taken place. What is it you think you're doing now? Or what what is it that gives you confidence that you're doing the right thing now to drive the club forward? Because it seems like for that article that Ian Gordon's really passionate about the club and he wants to deliver sex, better success. He's, he's quoted as, uh, as saying that. But what's the next step? And, and what gives you confidence that you have got the right structure in place? Because I think if if you go back to just a couple of months ago when they were talking about the review that was taking place at the football club, it sounded like that, and it sounded like from one of the statements, I think it accompanied uh, Malky McKay's appointment that the the club had carried out the review upon themselves. They, they'd marked their own homework. So with regards to the structure that's in place now, it's really hard to answer and say whether that's right or wrong the the yeah. evidence the the past the, the decisions that have been made in the past have been wrong they, they've admitted that they were wrong yeah so why why is it now suddenly right yeah that's a fair point john that's a totally yeah because uh, uh, we've made we've chopped and changed like strategy or you know like we need it. We don't need a director football. We do need a director football. No, we don't. We need a sport director. We need a development team. No, we don't need that. We're not putting the development team in the B League because so we'll do this, but we're not really going to do that. We're going. To, we're going to put players on loan. It's like we just chop and change. So I, all we've done here is make another change. Okay. How long will we stick with it? You know that. That's the what. Why is this one right when all the ones were wrong? And that's the that is the. Well, when you get down there, that that. How, how can you be so confident? You were confident about all the ones, and you just fucking sat folk. And, <laughs> and I mean, there's the man Siri, like we've got was a seventeen out and eleven in. I think it was Is referenced. It? Was that the out seventeen? Yeah, and, seventeen out. And, and you go, fuck me, like, and there's still maybe another ten. Like they're, they're actively saying, this can't be Nico. 
he would not go. We wanted him to go. And and now they're naming players in articles, like yes. or or players are being named in articles. But that that's purely that that's got to be for him saying. I just say no one can because he's mentioned in that article, isn't he? Yes, um, yeah. And and there's been other ones there, you know. They, and you go, that's that's like a, I he's one we want to get ready, but he'll fucking go. Aye. Yeah, we we, we, we gave him a mental contract Aye. and bummed him up as like a, a Premier League fucking star. Like, like that was us that done that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the quote in the paper was, <laughs> uh, sorry, in the article was, for every my leader, there's been a no one kenner. I don't think that's accurate. Really? I don't fair, think eh? there's I don't think that there's a one to one ratio for good players to bad players. <laughs> no. No, if only. Um what are the what are the things that they talk about? And maybe it speaks to that um that question about how can you be confident that it's the right path. Is they do put a, a bit of meat on the bones as to why they've taken the route that they have just now. So um if I go back, he he, he talks about when he was the head of recruitment. And he says at that time when we made the change with the structure we felt from an admin standpoint getting the full scoop, scope of the club and how it operates and the full detail of the league. As we learned, we felt it was the best time to put me in that place to oversee things. Uh, yes, head of recruitment was the role, but it was very much part of a collective team that worked together to identify targets. Uh, for me, it was about driving the process of how the manager was presented to uh, the players and ultimately it was the manager who made the decisions on recruitment. We were very manager-led recruitment, but collectively we worked day in, day out to present those lists. There's been lots of feelings, but there have been lots of positives. And then he says, like, over the past three years, we've done 7 million in player sales, which are great numbers. Um, and I just said that earlier in the, in the article, he says, with Malky coming in, and through those discussions, it was very much wanted uh, to have that Scottish core and the British experience. That is our main focus, but we still want to explore new markets and keeping that going. But it's about reassessing where we're at. We tried to go to international too young, too quickly. With Malky's experience and David, it was about the Scottish core, British experience that we can build around. I'd say there needed to be a bit of a reset. There's proof that that works in this league and the club has a history of it. I think it is absolutely that. So that that's what you said there. And that's the sort of the explanation to say, this is why we think it's worked. There's a history of, of it and the, the evidence that it works in the league. Uh, do you buy that, Colin? So when I read that, I thought, there is. There is. You know, like you, you look at other teams in it, uh, and I, it's a scattering. I am um, the 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 sort of foreign player, I suppose, if you want to call it that, like without sounding ridiculous. You know, it is, it is a, a a base of UK Irish based players, it, like without knowing squads in depth. It feels yeah. like that, um, and and we've tried to do something different, like buying the. Uh, Melkerson and, and the likes whereas now we're just going now we need to know like we'll give him a count for Dundee or but which we didn't get but you know what I mean that was your that was your number one target yeah. and all that because it's like they know the game they know the league um, all that so I think I think there's something in it I think there's something in that but like it's yet to be proven eh and but, but looking at the team now you look I mean the mid the majority probably is like based in being English, English leagues and, and Scottish leagues. Way so, certainly for the income, and I mean, I, I suppose you really? look at Hoyland, who's got half a season in Scotland, but still ah. has half a season in Scotland. Um, there's two cadens, well, you've got the two cadens, you've got the even the center half, they were based in the League One, League Championship, League One, League Two, whatever, whatever leagues yep. they were in. Um, well, they keep playing even, even though he's a yeah, they were English leagues, weren't they? Even though they're yeah. they're foreign, foreigners or European, they're 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 English based um, most of their career. Um, there, there's not many, uh, even even Kaharovic. I mean, he's, he's played most of his career in Scotland and fucking Wales. Yeah, you know, it's like it, it's not even. So so yeah, you've got the names, the foreign names, or the European names, but you've not got uh, their, their experiences in Scottish and English leagues. So yeah, whether it's right or not, I don't know. But but you can see maybe maybe the words do actually back up the fact here mm-hmm. this thing. Um, John, the next thing I thought that jumped out was about the finances. Right? Obviously, we never really like to get bogged down with the financial aspect of things because it's fucking boring. Um, but it, it calls out Hibs are, are also running at a loss too. 
And what I thought was interesting, you know, just with present tense, the way that this uh, bit was was uh, positioned in the article, uh, if you go back to the AGM and they showed the accounts which had a three point something million pound um, loss, three point nine million pound loss for the that financial year, and Beck Kensel was saying, yeah, but that's just like like a moment in time. We've had record turnover. Things are going to be better when we get the next set of accounts out. So now we're we're talking present days. This isn't like a this happened in the past and we fixed it. This is the article says Hibs are also running at a loss. The financial results posted last year were grim, being three point nine million in the red for the year up to thirtieth of June, uh, twenty twenty three. Wage to turnover ratio increased eighty one percent. The next set of figures are not expected to be much better, which is a, a direct contradiction to what um, Ben Kensel said. Uh, the Gordon dynasty is not short of a penny, but such a situation is not sustainable in the long run. Gordon's commitment to the club, however, is unwavering, promising to pay for any overspend on the sporting side of the club as he bids to get Hibs back to the sharp end of Scottish football. And Gordon's quoted as saying, at this time we're over the budget. That's an overspend that me and my family have committed to. We've had tons of commercial growth with the business side of the club, but we've been chasing football success. And obviously there have been some mistakes along the way. That's why we're in the situation now, but our family is committed to that overspend until we find the football success that allows the club to be sustainable. Um, and he talks about writing off the, the, the debt before, is it sort of like being keen to, to not saddle the club with debt? Um, any surprises there, uh, John? When, when when you see that, like we, we've all obviously kind of speculated as to what the financial position might be like at the club over the course of the summer, and then we thought maybe that speculation might not have been quite right when we put in a 600k bid for or a successful bid for um, Bowie. And then a close to a million pound bid for um, McEwen, which does sort of speak to there being some money available. Well, what what do you think when when, when you read that part of the article? What, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know I, I don't actually remember thinking too much at the time because as you mentioned there, it was it discussed like the three point six million uh, three point six million loss. It then went on to talk about like the present tense that you, that you said that suggested that Hibs are over budget now, and I think that would suggest that the account, the upcoming accounts, will be not make for great reading. And obviously, as you said about uh, Ben, it contradicts Ben Kensel's comments because at the time it was, I remember talking about it on one buyers and I, or talking about it separately. I definitely remember talking about it where it was. I could take that on board. I could take the. I it looks shite now, but I think he's. I think Ben's comments where it was about timing and Is context, it? I think, was the way that he justified it. But then you have that sort of continued, not miscommunication, but different information from different sources. And obviously, I, I forget when it was that the accounts were issued, but we're now a few months down the line. <laughs> what is it that's changed? Because I think between then and now, not that the account should necessarily be better, but there's been investment since then. Yeah. And I think the two of them, I, like, I, I don't think that the two of them are are linked, but the message coming out of the club is, shit, we're in the red, we're further in the red. And we've had investment at the same time. And I think the way that supporters may react to that will be, hang on, we just got fucking six million, but now you're posting another yeah. full wearing loss or, or whatever the loss might happen to be. Yeah. And I think from that, there's a, I've got a wee bit of a concern because as much as there was reference to the, the Gordon dynasty, I thought that was quite a, a an exotic term of phrase. Uh, we don't know what the wealth is, and I'm not saying that we should be privy to that, but I think we've had, when they bought the club, there was five million was, it was written off, so we were debt-free, I think, originally. There's been a further debt for equity since then how and I think it references it in the article as well it's, it's how long does that continue um, I mean I guess it continues as long as the Gordon Ian Gordon and the Gordon family are willing to bankroll it but I think as we've seen and in, in, in later in the article there was mention of like the goal is group stage football in three years time and, and unfortunately I'm, I'm old enough to remember Romanov talking about Champions League football in five years' time, and that particular dynasty didn't end very well. So are we just disagree? Disagree. 
I thought it ended fucking well, potentially uh, well. Nearly <laughs> perfectly. A, the, the, nearly. nearly perfectly. It depends on your From perspective. A, a purely <laughs> pragmatic point of view, uh, it did the end very well for them. <laughs> but it, I, it, I it's, it's, point. It's, a, it's, it's a concern because it goes back to the point that you Aye. made earlier where it's it's the Gord, because the Gordons and, and Black Knight are well, they, we don't really have a say in it. So if they decide, well, fuck it, like, we need to get some money back out of this, what happens? Yeah. So, so what I took for that was right, that the, the he, he was quite clear on like no saddling the club with debt. So they've done the debt for equity, but that means like I'll just fucking give you money and give me more shares to, to wipe it. And so we've not got a debt. Is this where we are? But I also seem to accept that that's because team on the pitch has been shit and not mm-hmm. getting the results. And that's what. So when Ben spoke about. Um, at the risk of calling Ben, like I don't know, I don't know the guy, right? Mister Pencil, yeah. But I listen part when, of the billionaires club in the in the, uh, yeah, the yeah, Albion yeah. bar in the Albion. But when when I spoke to Ed, so so when Ben said at the AGM about that, he he was estimating that or or assuming whatever that we were going to get in Europe, and we've not. So at least I've come out with as a lot of shite, and it's not because he was talking shite; it's because the assumptions were that we would get third place yeah. or fourth place. European chance, good place, da, 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 and that was why. Well, the assumptions never happened; they were wrong. So we're here now. We're we're going to get that. But I'm going to pay it. Don't worry, I'm covering it because then we're going to get the football stage right. And when we get the football stage right, I'm going to cover it. That's how. That's how I yeah. took that part of the article. Because, well, I know when I like when I do stuff at work, you make assumptions. They're not all going to be right. You know, you've just got to put stuff in place and say, mine's isn't it, mine's isn't it fucking millions of pounds, mine's is about how many staff we need to do a process, right? But but you put assumptions in place and go, well, what, that, 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 and that, only three, four, right? And that that's how that's how I do it. <laughs> and then you go, mm, fuck, we only need, we need four, or we need, fuck, it was only two, but that's fine. So you always overestimate. But but Ben's overestimated, so fuck. Because we go eighth, we never never even got in the top six. Never mind mm-hmm. the fucking European place he was banking on, which was going to bank. Well, maybe get another villa, or we'll maybe get in the group stages and get like a fucking six home games or I know, it's it's mental yeah. mental amount of games this year. So, so that was what the assumption was. Look, we're going to do that because we spent. Yeah. So, I think sometimes assumptions will be false. But it's <laughs> the it's the weakness in that in that. Um, plan if you like like if we get the football side right we start being more self-sustaining but we haven't got the football side right so how are you but confident have realized and, and, that. and that was the positive i'm taking from it is that i actually realized that though and then he's talking about the players for the league that you'd rather than <laughs> like taking yeah. a punt on melkerson I, I, I tell you what you keep using melkerson but you know like that was like and there's there's other examples like, Use Jaya. Uh, Belkerson and, and Jaya were like the poster boy ones, weren't they? Like, yeah. they came up with the fanfare and, and then yeah. failed to deliver. And I suppose that using Ian Gordon's argument, they got good money from Elkerson when they did sell him on. So maybe it wasn't a complete failure, just never, never impacted. Um, I suppose this takes us on to the Black Knight side of things as well, which is addressed. Um, so say, the article says the club tried to strengthen its sporting and financial position with a tie up with Black Knight, whose chain of football sides include Bournemouth. Right. The shareholder in six billion pound investment was confirmed. Um, although the relationship had a significant speed bump when Bill Foley claimed him had not been listening to their input to our input. Um, Foley wanted a different head coach and sporting director, but Hibbs went with Grand uh, Mackay. Uh, I think the interest this confirms it. So this was the sort of speculation at the time. We believe that Hibbs, Hibbs briefed the evening news uh, at the time of Bill Foley's comments that this is uh, what happened and what they were unhappy with. This seems to confirm it. So uh, Gordon says, um, I think the reaction caught us all off guard a little bit. Uh, But ultimately, through the recruitment process of Malky and Dave, they were very involved in that whole process and it came down to what we felt was best for the club. So so that's why we went with the appointment of Malky and Dave. Obviously, he voiced his opinion on that, but we thought that was the best move for the club. He says, I think the relationship is very strong. I think we're still in the early stages of that and we're going to see the true benefits in months and years to come. We feel we're in a really good place for them. We've had many conversations. There is constant dialogue. They've just hired a new president for the Black Knight Group, which will set up the network. And still very much in the early stages of this, and Malkit is now in constant communication with them. Does that give you some reassurance about the whole 
Black Knight uh, situation, Colin? I don't know. I don't know. I, I suggest that I caught them off guard. I clearly caught them off guard because they never responded to it. You know, other than a sort of off-the-record comment where I think it was in the evening news. It was. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know how comfortable I am with that. I'd like to know more about the Black Knights thing because it felt like there would be more hands-on or more input. They would have more input. Whereas it sounds like they've went, no sure about they two, and we went, fuck you. And they've went, not happy about that. And and that's, and they've went, oh, I'm surprised at that. Like, are you? you? They just said, no, employ they two, and you've employed they two. Why, why are you surprised that they're mm -hmm. not happy about it? <laughs> you're, you're six million pounds. No, no, just do what you want. Like, that's not what they said. Like, clearly, right? So, so I'm a wee bit like, why are you surprised? Would be my first reaction to it, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. Um, but if they're working together, I'm happy to hear that. But I would be interested to hear how that what that actually means, because it just feels like they've had the first opportunity after giving us six million pounds. They've had mm -hmm. the first opportunity to input two times, and we've had no listening, right? Giving it the full fucking fingers in the ear. No, nah, listening. Nah, we'll nah, nah. <laughs> we've got to take what we want. Oh, what was that? I can't hear you. Huh. And, it's a and bad then... line. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh, teams is a nightmare on these fucking laptops. Right. But I, it's like, so here's money. Here's our input. Nah, I'm not interested. Then this, oh, I'm surprised to hear that you're not happy about that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it quite. Doesn't it quite land for me? Yeah. Um, of course they're going to be unhappy. Uh, John, the, the next part was about the £6 million and where, where it was uh, spent. So uh, I can say it was Mark Atkinson that the, the article was yeah, He says, yeah, I query where the £6 million was spent. And uh, Ian Gordon said, we probably haven't been as good at communicating that. Uh, but the money has been ring-fenced for very yeah. specific sections. The rail seating, the fixing of the lights, the north stand. Some of the money was for that. Some of the money is for commercial growth. Some of the money is for academy and women's football. And then some of it is for the wage bill. It had to be very much broken down into specific areas. Um, and he says he wouldn't give an exact percentage. I asked him how, how much went on the first team. He said he wouldn't give an exact percentage on it, but I think what's been reported in the past is slightly wide of the mark. A portion of that was invested in the wage bill. Um, now, I can't remember what was reported. I know... Bill Foley said that we'll have a couple of million to spend. Um, so whether he's saying, listen, a couple of million is they were close to it. Or if they underreported it, I don't I don't think you see that they underreported it. I think they I think they've overreported it and underspent into the into the, the wage bill. Uh John, any concerns about where the the money has gone when it's explained like that? No. I I, I think I got the impression, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, because you were at the, the AGM. Did you say that there was a slide that spoke about how that money was going to be invested the, the, in, a, in the, a presentation? Yeah. Then the presentation, they, they spoke through the benefits of the, the investment to, to Hibson, to the community, and to Scottish football in, in general. Um, mm. And it spoke to things like the improved training facilities. It spoke to a new home for the women's team. So uh, women's team having better training facilities, but also uh, like their own sort of uh, stadium, if you like, because they didn't want to be based at, at Meadow Bank. Um, things like that, they talked about obviously the investment into the first team as well. But yeah. I, I, like, I, I guess you have to, like there are things you have to re reassess your priorities because we didn't get the European football. As uh, as Colin was mentioned, you go, fuck, right, well, we can't do everything that we set out to do, so you have to sort of drop some things and prioritise others. It's just whether or not those priorities were the right ones. and yeah. I, I mean, I suppose you can say, you can take the Captain Hindsight approach for that stuff and say, well, why would you spend it there when we needed it someone else? Or I thought we needed it someone else. I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned about where the money was spent. I think I referenced it before where uh, when Brian was on the podcast four or five years ago, he was talking, it was always, it was always, the money was always being spent on infrastructure. Okay. Uh, jam tomorrow, I, they call it. Uh, jam, jam tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, and I think, and I, I don't know what any sort of future investment was. What, what is it they call? It? Is it the capital calls? It is. I don't know what that would look like in future. 
because of that relationship, because of that comment from Bill Foley, like you, I think you'd like to know, well, if the comment caught you by surprise, what conversations yeah. have taken place since then and what, what's the, the standard of the relationship now? Because I think what we've heard is constant dialogue, uh, positive discussions, but you've got that one massive outlier there. So, yeah. so where are we now? Because we've, we've not seen any players since then. What the future capital calls and investments look like? Will that money be going on players? Who knows? Good point to end it. That's as out of time for tonight's episode. Uh, there is, a, I think, a Sky Sports interview, an hour long one going out with uh, Luke Shanley uh, on Monday morning. So after you've listened to this, which I'm sure will be your first protocol, if you're not a subscriber and listening to it on Sunday night, uh, your first protocol will be listening to this on Monday morning. Uh, once you finish here, go and have a look at uh, what it's said in Sky Sports. And we might pack that up in extra time uh, tomorrow night, which is a subscriber exclusive and just carry on the conversation. But I think we've gone through the sort of key points there. Uh, we will be back, uh, like I say, with extra time for subscribers and then with our phone in on Thursday evening. Uh, we're away off now. We watch the second half of the Scotland game. Tim McKim at the score, is it now? I think it's still one in Scotland. Aye, right, one in Scotland. There you go. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we will see you next time. Well, they tell me now when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water, no, 